Welcome back Guardians. In today's video, I'm speaking about the epilogue in season of the Splicer. This is the final mission and cutscene for the season. If you've not played it yet, please go play it first and then come back. Right, so today's focus will of course be Osiris, specifically how he assisted Lakshmi to, to create a Vex portal and how Osiris refused to help defend the Elixni as they were attacked by the Vex. You have very likely seen people say that Osiris is Savathun in disguise, and this is part of the lead up to the Witch Queen. However, you may not be aware of where this theory came from, you know, apart from his strange behavior in the epilogue. So I want to start with the season of the hunt, the moment Osiris lost his ghost, and have a closer look at all his dialogue and actions leading up to the current season, everything that Osiris does that seemed a little bit off. That being said, this video does become a case of, if you think someone is guilty, you view everything through this lens, and all of a sudden, everything they do seems suspicious. However, Osiris has a long list of weird behavior ever since he lost Sagira, and so that is what we're going to talk about today. Is Osiris really Savathun? Or is this some huge 4000 IQ game plan where he's trying to out trick the trickster, trying to beat Savathun at her own game? And that is why his behavior seems odd. I mean, I guess he's sort of got Lakshmi 2 killed. If you are new to the channel, I would also recommend my previous lore video on the friendly harpy that can be seen in the epilogue mission, which is a fantastic Easter egg. Or you can check out my Twitch channel where I stream every day. All the links will be in the description below. This is Mylan Games, and I hope you enjoyed this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let's move through each season documenting the behavior of Osiris, starting with Season of the Hunt, then Season of the Chosen, and then this season, a Season of the Splicer. I also want to acknowledge a massive Reddit post that helped collate many of these points. The post was by Spooky Doggo on the Destiny Law subreddit. I will link that below too. Right, so in the season of the hunt, Osiris loses his ghost, Sagira, when investigating the Hive Cryptoliths. Sagira's death happens off screen, with the player only hearing about it from Zavala as you fly into the opening mission for season of the hunt. You also hear about Sagira's passing in Zavala's office at the terminal scans. To find out what exactly happened to Sagira, you have to read the web lore. Immolent Part 2 actually describes Sagira's final moments. In this lore entry, Osiris discovers Hive Cryptoliths corrupting the Cabal, and through further investigation, he tracks down the High Celebrant. The High Celebrant is tithed to Oryx's third sister, Zivarath. This leads Osiris to the moon, where he confronts a bunch of Hive nobility, and while he was initially successful in battle, the High Celebrant, channeling Zivarath, is able to pin Osiris to a rock. Zivarath is the Hive God of War, so I believe as Osiris battled on, he was only empowering Zivarath slash the High Celebrant. Throughout the battle, Osiris hears whispers from Zivarath. The High Celebrant eventually gains the upper hand and is able to pin Osiris to a rock. The Celebrant then carves these Hive Sigils into the rock, which seem like they would permanently drain Osiris of his light, or at least do something to permanently destroy him. Osiris's ghost, Sagira, uses a last resort tactic and essentially explodes herself using the light. The explosion of light cleanses the Hive Ritual and saves Osiris. Have a listen to the web lore, The Immolent Part 2. It reads, His light is breaking. Osiris, why don't you ever listen to me? She compiles in front of him. What are you? Shut up, listen to my words. Her iris is bright with light. There are great things still left for you. Don't lose hope in the darkness. She is luminant. Osiris breathes the word as if he could hold it back. No, he would understand in time. She had seen it. Blinding light erupts from Sagira's core as she splits apart. A wave of light surges and tears across the chasm. Her sacrifice cleanses every trace of Zivarath's presence. The sigil erased. The cryptolith that supported her projection destroyed. Osiris draws breath, alone. The aegis of Sagira's light stands strong in the shadow of the pyramid for days. Right, I think at first people were a bit suspicious of Sagira's death off screen, saying well maybe Savathun just captured Osiris, faked Sagira's death, 
because then Savathun could more easily impersonate Osiris as he wouldn't have a ghost, which I think is partially correct. At this stage, I'm leaning towards Sagira is actually dead and the events described in the web lore are fairly accurate. The part that I do agree with is that I think Savathun took advantage of this opportunity, a ghostless Osiris. Osiris, one of the most powerful guardians, is now without a ghost. I think that would be an opportunity too good for Savathun to pass by. If Savathun did impersonate Osiris, she could easily explain any oddities in her behavior through the loss of Sagira. People would forgive fake Osiris, acting strange, and simply believe he is in a state of grief. And this is exactly what happens after Sagira dies. Osiris starts acting very odd. And so we are presented with two options. Either Osiris is indeed going through grief, or Savathun is impersonating slash possessing Osiris. So what do you think? Have a listen to the web lore, A Play of Shadow and Light. It reads, You have come to ask after Osiris, yes? He keeps his focus ahead on the play of shadow and light. I just want to know if he's a Cora pauses. She doesn't know which words to use. Saint nods, then folds his hands in his lap. You know Osiris, he says with a hint of good-natured jab in his tone. Private, even among friends, cloistered. Akora remains silent, but lays a reassuring hand on Saint's arm. But he has changed. Saint's shoulders slacken. Ever since the young wolf dragged him off the moon, it feels like a part of him stayed there. Saint shakes his head. He's both obsessed and empty. Then quietly he adds, he would not even let me comfort him. Osiris has never handled grief well. Akora gives his arm a squeeze, but leaves her hand there in reassurance. You know the roads that can lead him down. Yes, Saint agrees. He's already planning, researching old records of the speaker, cryptarch texts on ghosts. I worry so much, but I cannot tell him so. You know how he would react. Akora squeezes Saint's arm again. Saint? The Titan turns to regard Akora. Wordless acknowledgement of her question. This isn't easy to ask, but you know Osiris better than anyone. He already knows the question by the palpable concern in Akora's eyes. Is Osiris a danger to himself? So as you can see, if this is Savathun, Sagira's death is perfect for dismissing any suspicion. On top of that, if this is Savathun, she has also used Sagira's death to justify digging up old records on the speaker and even ghosts. Once again, this would be powerful information to Savathun, but seems completely normal in the context of Osiris losing Sagira. Right, so to continue this video, we sort of need to entertain the idea that, yes, the Osiris that we've been working with since Season of the Hunt is actually Savathun. And what I'm going to suggest next is that Savathun Osiris used the death of Sagira to get close to Zavala, specifically to become Zavala's advisor, which would eventually lead into the events in the Season of the Chosen. So Savathun Osiris gives a message to Akora, which was supposedly written by Sagira. Savathun Osiris says she couldn't bear to read the letter, but requests Akora to read it for her. This letter is a massive sob story to paint the way for Savathun to get close to Zavala. The letter implants the idea in Akora's head, implants the idea that Savathun Osiris should be Zavala's assistant. Stay with me and have a listen to the letter. The web law, a play of shadows and light reads, but before that, Osiris had handed her a message, one he couldn't bear to read, which was just as well because it contained, amongst other things, an all caps indictment. He is not as strong as he thinks. Akora had smiled upon reading that. Even in death, Sagira couldn't resist taking her guardian down a peg or two. The rest of the message was not as amusing. I know you know that, Akora but I'm telling you here because he will try to strong arm you and everyone else into leaving him alone. Please don't let him. Without me there to harass him into asking for help, I don't know what he will do. Something self-destructive is my guess. You're the same that way. You've got hungry minds, needing constant challenges to occupy you. My death is one of those puzzles that cannot be solved. He'll try though. He'll try until he burns out completely, only this time, I won't be there to sweep up the ashes. Right, so firstly, how did Sagira make this message in the middle of a battle, the moment before she died? 
it's odd, right? Maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe I didn't read everything correctly, but I don't get quite how Sagira wrote this message about her own death. And so once again, I'm leaning towards Osiris being Savathun, and Savathun just played Akora like an absolute fool. She got fed this sob story in a fabricated letter, and Akora went running straight to Zavala and advocated to make Osiris Zavala's assistant. Akora thought this would help Osiris overcome the death of Sagira. The web law continues, so have a listen to a play of shadow and light. It reads, Zavala looks at her, bewildered. Is she seriously suggesting that now is the time to... I don't mean filling Cade's seat, not with everything that's going on. I think a better plan is for you to take on an assistant. Akora fights to keep her face neutral as she presses on. One who has experience in times of war, who understands the vanguard's role intimately, especially when it comes to making decisions that may be unpopular. Now it's Zavala's turn to chuckle. Not many candidates with those qualifications, same 14 perhaps, and he stops short, the faint smile evaporating from his face. You're not asking me to make Osiris my assistant, are you? Akora clears her throat, briefly overtaken by the urge to transmat far, far away. Landing in a nest of angry hive would be preferable to finishing this conversation. Advisor is probably the title he would prefer. Right, so why would Savathun Osiris want to be the advisor to Zavala? Well, this is when the theory of Savathun Osiris spreads into the season of the Chosen. But just before we get there, we need to recognize one final thing from Season of the Hunt. It was Osiris who brought the crow back into the city. Osiris meets with the crow to help organize a disguise and to get him back into the tower. And this is one of those examples where if you think Osiris is Savathun, you just view everything with suspicion. In the web lore, one exiled to another, Osiris is speaking with the crow about getting him back into the tower and setting him up with a disguise. Have a listen to what the entry says. Osiris paused at the front of the loading ramp and turned to face Crow. There will come a time when your identity, your past, can no longer stay hidden. This of course would be completely normal to say to the Crow. However, if we are in conspiracy mode, you could also point to this and say, Ha! That is Savathun talking about herself. She's talking about how her Osiris disguise and how she will need to reveal herself eventually. This actually aligns really well with Season of the Splicer, specifically the law entry where Savathun is in the city and strangely is feeling empathetic towards the city. Anyway, we'll get to Season of the Splicer in a moment. So the theory so far, Savathun is currently impersonating Osiris. She took advantage of Osiris losing his ghost, knowing that she could justify any odd behavior. Then she also gave this massive sob story to Akura Ray in order to get her support to become Zavala's advisor. And then she brought the crow into the tower under a different disguise. And so now the conspiracy continues into Season of the Chosen. In week 3 of Season of the Chosen, we investigate Scion activity and believe that Ixul may be trying to acquire Vex prediction engine technology. After you complete this activity and defeat Ixul, you return to the helm. Upon speaking with the Crow and Osiris, you hear Osiris say that he will not tell any of this information about the Scions to Zavala. This shocks Crow and once again is a continuation of odd behavior. Have a listen. Good, you're here. The science you broke up on Nessus are plotting something. Help Crow investigate this further. Wait. You aren't going to tell the commander? This concerns him. He deserves to know. My hope is there won't be anything to tell. Not if you and the Guardian see this through. I feel like as the season of the Chosen continues, Osiris continues to escalate in odd decision making. For example, Osiris gets angry at the crow for stopping, that's right, for stopping an assassination on Zavala. Zavala saw the crow without his mask, however passed it off as an hallucination because in his mind there was no way that Aldrin could be back from the dead. The crow warns Zavala by shouting out from his hiding place, allowing Zavala to take out the Scion assassin. Have a listen to what Osiris says to Crow after Crow stopped an assassination attempt on Zavala. You were seen. At that distance, in the dark, no. 
Enough to put a name to a dead man's face. The commander told Ikora. Thankfully, he passed you off as a hallucination. An assassin was inside our walls. I had to do something. This isn't the first time an enemy has infiltrated the city. And it won't be the last. Your concern is noted, but far from a crisis. An attempted assassination isn't a crisis? Zavala is quite capable of dispatching a lone scion. He was distracted, soon to be lightless. If I wasn't... Unmasked? Didn't the spider teach you that even small mistakes bring large consequences? I suppose you learned that chasing Zivu Arath. Choose your next words wisely. I should have kept my mask on, but I don't regret acting. I still think Zavala's in danger. That is why I'm embedding you as his bodyguard. Is that wise? We need to draw in their assassins, and a full security outfit is too obvious. Keep your mask on. Always. Do not speak. Can I trust you to handle this with discretion? The utmost. It almost sounds like Asaris is angry with Crow for stopping an assassination attempt on Zavala. If you remember back to Season of the Chosen, Saladin quite passionately opposed Zavala's plans. And Asaris at first supports Saladin and then later changes his mind. It definitely seemed like Asaris was trying to cause infighting between the tower leadership. And this theme of causing dissonance within the tower continues into Season of the Splicer. But before we get there, I want to quickly mention that also in Season of the Chosen, we discover the Crown of Sorrow aboard the Glycon. I covered this in a lot of detail in my previous video about Osiris being suspicious. I will link it below and also in the top right hand corner of this video right now. But essentially, Osiris transports the Crown of Sorrow into the city, and the Crown of Sorrow is a known trap by Savathun, and it seems extremely risky to try and bring this item into the city. Okay, now let's move on to Season of the Splicer. In the lore tab for Empty Vessel, Asara speaks to Saladin and plants this idea that people think Saladin ordered the assassination on Zavala. Once again, this continues Asara's behavior of causing dissonance among the tower leadership. Have a listen, the Empty Vessel reads. Saladin is quiet. Asara sees the lack of outward defiance as a foothold. He digs in. Many without our shared convictions have questioned your leadership decisions during the recent crisis with Empress Keitel. Osiris dips his head in close to Saladin, voice hushed as if to share a secret. Others suggest that it was you who ordered the assassination attempt on the commander. Right, at this point I do start to feel like I'm repeating myself, but there truly is a long list of Osiris acting really odd. And Season of the Splicer has many of these moments. Like how about this, in the boots of the Assembler, Osiris is looking for light suppressing technology, the technology that the science used on Zavala's ghost. Now of course, for Zavala's advisor, this is not suspicious at all, but if Osiris is really Savathun, well then that's pretty bad. In this entry, Osiris is also super cold towards Saint-14. Have a listen, the boots of the Assembler reads. Saint-14 was doing munitions inventory when Asara swept into the room. Saint put down his data pad next to a crate of grenades and stood up. Asara scanned the shelves of guns and ammo, looking for something. Saint stood dumbly, waiting for some kind of acknowledgement. When it was clear that none was forthcoming, he called out, Asaris, what are you looking for? His voice was loud and strained. Asaris didn't turn from the shelves. The light suppressor that the Scions used on Zavala's ghost. I need it for my research. Zavala kept it, I think. Ask him about it, Saint replied, trying not to sound put out. Asaras faced his partner, his eyes narrowed in thought. Very well. Then as an afterthought, thank you. As the former warlock turned to leave, Saint called out, I was hoping we could spend some time together soon, just the two of us. Doing what? Asaras inquired with a small smile. We could fly out to the Alps, Saint suggested, or walk around the ruins of Prague like we used to. That seems fine, Osiris said. He shrugged his shoulder. Provided the city doesn't burn to the ground in our absence, 
Then after a beat, is that all? Is that all? Behind his helmet, Saint frowned. I suppose. Asara strode from the room, leaving Saint alone with a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. Right, still not convinced? Don't worry, I have many more wacky Osiris behaviours. Remember when Ikora Ray said that Osiris was plotting and Osiris almost sounded guilty like he had been found out because, you know, that's what Savathun is known for, plotting and scheming? Let me remind you. Excellent work. The Guardian's performance has provided me with a wealth of information. Still plotting, are we? Pardon? You were always trying to look ten steps ahead. I suppose that's why you and the Speaker used to butt heads. Ah, yes. Well, forewarned is forearmed. But I don't need to tell you that, do I? I learned from the best. And do you remember when we faced Koria Blade Transform, and Osiris says that he will never underestimate us again, almost like a threat, rather than being impressed with our actions? Let me remind you. When you first stole into this realm, I did not believe you could achieve what you have. Invading a domain of vexed consciousness like this. Yet, here you are. Embodiment of the impossible. Somehow, in spite of everything you've accomplished, I managed to underestimate you. I won't make that mistake again. Right, then of course, the epilogue. The season finale of Season of Spice had told us that Osiris assisted Lakshmi to, to create the Vex portal. Remember, Lakshmi's goal with the Vex portal was to basically yeet the Elixir out into space. Why would Osiris help with that? Then again, of course, this backfired and she was killed by the Vex that poured through the portal. As Mithrax, Saint, Akora, Amanda Holiday and Zavala all rush to the defense of the Elixir in the district, Osiris just watched on and then walked away. When you put all this information in one place, everything that has happened since Season of the Hunt, it seems very likely that Osiris is either Savathun or is possessed by Savathun, and this whole scheme was started with the death of Sagira, which creates a perfect cover story for Savathun Osiris to be acting weird and also collecting information about the light right under the nose of the Vanguard. Savathun Osiris researched ghosts, light inhibiting technology, and even information about the speaker. The only thing is, now that I've finished writing this video, do you think this is all too obvious? Maybe Bungie will do a complete 180 and this will be just some massive plan by Osiris to out-trick the trickster. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word Osiris. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.